And now, coming to you live from the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California, it's the Sheena Metal Experience with your host, Sheena Metal, only on KGRA Digital Broadcasting. Hi, and welcome to the Sheena Metal Experience on KGRA Digital Broadcasting Network. I'm your host, Sheena Metal. I'm a psychic medium, and I'm an energetic healer, and I'm a 29-year talk radio host in Los Angeles and beyond. I'm a creative and a performing artist and a paranormal survivor, and I come to you live from my home in Southern California every Friday at 3 o'clock Pacific time. This show is about spirituality. It's about creativity. It's about humanity. It's about passion. It's about service. It's about becoming and then maintaining being your best you in this big, beautiful world and then inspiring others to do the same. And every week on the show, it may be my show. It is the Sheena Metal Experience after all, but it's always and without a doubt your experience. Uh, My guest today is a wonderfully talented creative and performing artist and spiritual being and spiritual practitioner as well. It's interesting. And I'm going to talk to him today about how those two worlds often play together so much. Um, He not only has his own spiritual practice where he's doing a lot of good work for the world, but he is also um, of course the owner and the creator of Minaret guitars, some of the most beautiful guitars that you will ever see in the world. And I'm honored to say that um, my last band played Minaret guitars and I have a feeling my new band will as well. Please welcome to the show, the wonderful Mark Menerick is here. How are you, my friend? Great to see you, Sheena. I am so happy to be here. I am doing great. I've been looking forward to this for the month since we uh, set this up. So really super Absolutely. glad to be here. Absolutely. Me too, my friend. And it's so good to have you here. And I'm honored to have you here with me. Um, it's interesting. When I Let's start. Let's go right off the bat talking about what I started with, right? I don't know about for you, but for me, the creative channel, which I call the hatch, because to me, it feels like a sunroof, right? You can close it. You can partially close it. I leave mine open all the time. Um, it, it is where where the spiritual messages come from. It's also where the creative messages come from, right? It's the same channel. It's just different things come through it. A hundred percent agreement. That channel, uh, it's almost like a freeway and there's 25 different cars in the garage and you can pick a different car to be driving on that freeway and each of them is purpose driven so yes the creative like you're saying it'll be one car going to do your spiritual work different car but it's the same highway so i love the way you put that very yeah. well put absolutely and it to, to me it is um like i said i picture it as a like up over my right shoulder as a sunroof And as the sun is constantly coming through the sunroof, unless you close it, the messages are perpetually coming through the channel unless you chose to choose to close it. And they almost sort of fall down into you, right? From, from the beyond. Um, It's people always say things like, well, how do I get the messages to come? Or what work do I have to do? And I'm like, no, 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 you don't have to do anything. You just have to get out of your own way because the messages are coming only you can block them. It makes sense. And, and just for my my pathway, because it's a great thing you brought up, um, I, I'm adopting this term of a, a Christ conscious channel. And just what that means is um, I, I connect through God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and then whatever information I'm asking for or help or healing, whatever I'm doing, I'm leaving it up to that triumvirate to go to that other side, grab what's necessary and deliver it to me, which is different than just going straight to the spirit world. Okay. So that's my channels a little bit different. Um, and I call it the God filter. So it's anything that would come through, uh, if any of those three parts of the triumvirate don't deem that to be appropriate information for me, it doesn't come through. So that with that being said, Everything else, yes, 100%. And um, getting out of your own way. You know, it's interesting when people are coming to you to look for some help on on building that, for me, that connection with God. Uh, it, you have to actually give them some tips, tricks, and hints 
on how to get out of their own way because with all the programming and matrixing and everything going around, it, it, some people are really stuck. So yeah. part of being helpful is, is identifying where are they stuck and what tools do you need to use to assist so they can get, you know, get connected and, and be able to cut everyone else out of the loop and just go direct to God and, and not need anybody else. But to start, sometimes, you know, they need a helping hand. Absolutely. Because of what yeah. you said, they can't get out of their own way. Yeah. 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 Well, there's this idea that you have to um, open your third eye, which makes me laugh. Like you got to get in there and pry the thing open with a crowbar. Um, and I always tell people, no, 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 no. You know, <laughs> let's not force anything. It, it's going to open when you're ready, when you're out of your way enough to receive the messages it will open on its own. It's a natural function like, you know, developing hair on your chest or, you know, or hips for girls. It's not something that you need to be like rooting around in there, popping open before it's time. It will right. open on its own. You just have to be prepared because the messages are coming, right? So spirit wants to make sure you can handle those messages coming before they open that eye enough that all those messages can come through, right? You have to be ready to accept those messages. And, and you have to, and so, so much of your spiritual path, I believe, is trust. You have to trust in spirit, which is what I call God. You have to trust in spirit to, to, um, to guide you where you need to be at that time and not try to overthink it, but at the same time, not decide it's not happening. You just have to stay open to it. And that's hard, I think, because I think in the three-dimensional world, and I think, Mark, for us growing up as artists, 100%, right? We yes. are taught to, like, go out and get that thing, right? Knock that door down. Make that thing happen. That's very much an earthbound concept. For spirit, as it's been told to me, it's more about you get all your eggs in a group, right? And then you just let things fall down into you when the time comes. And I think for those of us on our spiritual path, that's sort of a lot of relearning that we have to do right there because we're used to this idea that we got to go out and grab something by the balls. And that's, that's, that's an earthbound thing. That's not a spiritual thing. It's not how it works. That is amazing. And yes, I, I wouldn't change anything there. That's brilliant. Uh, one term, if I may, to introduce Please. here, based on what you said that has been my experience is um, spiritual bypassing. Mm. And uh, you will um, see people going out and um, taking all the classes and the certificates and, and the courses and the class. Uh, that's great. You want to go educate yourself. No problem. Do that. Go for that. But you really nailed it. There's a divine choreography here. And that's that information is going to come down in exactly the right time, regardless of how many classes or how much you push the envelope. OK, to try to force it to, to show up quicker. I'm not saying that you can't get that information and you can't the certificates. That's great. Um, but just doing those classes isn't going to give you the walk. OK, that walk is a walk and that sometimes that takes time and it may not. It's according to God's timing, not ours. And the spiritual bypassing for me is, you know, getting getting the book information, but not having the real world experience with it. And there's that there's been a huge increase of that. There's a lot of people out there that that, you know, have a wall full of um, plaques and certificates and haven't really done a whole lot of spiritual walking, which is just being like you said, it's just being and letting these things fall into place in this natural choreography. So um, I just what I end up running into a lot when people come to to for make appointments with me is trying to help them fill in the gaps with there's a lot of spiritual bypassing. They have the book part, but they're missing. There's huge gaps in the experience. So yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. tap in and ask for assistance. Go, you know, God, what can I do here to be helpful? And I'll get the downloads, share it with them and they're off to the races. But that's something that's. Um, it's a good uh, and a bad, you know, the spirituality is becoming something people are less afraid of, which we had a, a real pro in my opinion, a real problem with, you can only do things in orchestrated ways. And, and if you didn't, you're, you're going to get squashed. That's easing up a little bit. 
and and so people are out there doing things you know 20 years ago there were you were, you couldn't go down the street and go take a for an example go take reiki class right i mean that's just right right and now that's just like something people talk about at you know at, to grab tea with each other it's not even a, a thing so that uh, relaxing has allowed people i believe to at least aim themselves for a deeper walk, um, a deeper spiritual walk. And, but what came along with that was the spiritual bypassing, which, which is, again, I'm just sharing that because that's something that's really been showing up for me with uh, client work, be, having to help people uh, fill in those gaps that, that come with just being and not just taking all the classes and books and, and, uh, and things like that. So thank you for letting me share that. It was just something yeah. that's been coming up for me on uh, helping people. <clears throat> well, I have friends who have taken all those classes, right? In the in, and so, in the hopes that someday uh, they're going to open a spiritual practice, but they just continue to take the classes. And I think when I sort of hit the ground running and started doing this work without taking all the classes, there were some raised eyebrows in my periphery. But two things: one, my mother was a psychic medium, so I sort of grew up with the classes. Uh, even though when I was a kid, she didn't talk about who she was or her gifts. Still, I grew up with the classes. I was I was raised by the sensei. So I think I and, and secondly, I I took when I when it was my time, it was uh, her advice that she gave to me after she passed and sort of, you know, kicked me in the butt a little bit and spirit as well. It was not a choice. It was now is your time to open your spiritual practice. Spirit did not say to me, now is your choice to take 20 classes and then open your spiritual practice. So I just did it. And it, and it's kind of yep. been boots on the ground for me, but everybody has a different path, right? And that was mine. So don't mm -hmm. think that you can't take the classes, but don't think that you have to take the classes. What you have to do, the main class that you have to take is the master class from God. You have to listen to spirit and take whatever class spirit is telling you to take, whether it's go out there now and do the work or get your Reiki certification or become a nurse or become a teacher or whatever it is, go, become a psychic medium and have a practice, um, go out there and, and do it. But that's the class you have to take first. You have to listen to the class from spirit. I think listening to God is the first thing I would advise anybody to do. Make, you have to get that connection opened up and powered up and uh, everything else through God. So uh, I'm obviously, I'm going to agree with that. I think that's fantastic. And um, yeah, uh, there was something I was going to say. It'll come back to me later. But yeah, I appreciate that point. Um, definitely. Uh, the thing about you, just looking at you and, and then myself um, as well, um, I, I never saw, you know, I always say you're on your spiritual walk. You've heard that yeah. term, right? Sure, yeah. There's a, there's a reason that people aren't on their spiritual run. And what I can say is that you, you, you did the walk I, and I'm doing the walk. There's a difference and you can see it when somebody's running with it or they're walking it. And just the, the run, I, I you can run all you like. God has timing for you. I promise. And again, yeah, taking classes is great, but, you know, at some point you're going to have to, you know, find out what is God's timing. And that's getting connected, opening that channel between you and God and going direct, going direct with that, um, that dialogue, which um, as one of the things that I'm going to say February, I'm going to launch my second book, uh, How to Talk to God and Actually Get Answers Back, nice. where, where I'm uh, giving people some stepping stones on how to open up that uh, dialogue because you, you, you started off with, with something so, so important and impactful uh, about, you know, people getting out of their own way and figuring out how to, to, to have that conversation. So that you, because everybody's different and you, and again, you touched on this too, because you're great like that. Um, everybody's walk is different. Yeah. You, your walk is yours. Mine's not going to be like, like Jesse's and Jesse's won't be like Amanda's. So in this book, I had to create stepping stones that would account for every single person that reads this is going to be different. How can I get individual people all over the spectrum, different beliefs, atheists, anything else you want to get on that connection? 
that was the challenge. And it took a few years of downloading and getting it together, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And I, I can't wait to get this out into the, into the consciousness um, for people who want to make that connection to God, you know? So, yeah. yeah. Thank you for yeah. bringing up all those points, Sheena, as usual, you're uh, you knock it out of the park on making points. So thank, thank you. Thank you. It's, it's amazing to me that, and sad that people think they can't have a relationship with God. Um, and that that relationship has to either be bound by the community standards of an incarnate community, i.e. religion or whatever, or mm -hmm. that they have to go through someone else like a member of the clergy in order to be able to speak to God, that somehow uh, clergy members know a little bit more. And I am a clergy member. I'm, I'm a minister and pastor to the church here in L.A. and uh, very proud to be both. But um, I don't think I have like some special thing that you don't have and God talks to me first. Um, even when people want to speak with their past loved ones and they come to me, it's just because they don't know how or they're not ready to do it on their own. It's not that I have some special gift that only I can do it. So you have to come to me. Um, it's that people sometimes aren't ready. It's kind of like a therapist, right? How all the secrets to fixing yourself psychologically you have all those tools. You're just not sure where to find them. And that's why mm -hmm. you seek out help from a psychiatrist, psychologist, therapist, because you it helps you to unlock and get you on your way. I think that spiritual practitioners like us, Mark, or members of the clergy, it's the same thing. We're just here to sort of aid you on your trip to uh, figuring it all out for yourself. And that, I think, is really beautiful. Because I think it's beautiful that, that spirit wants us to figure it all out for ourselves. But I also think it's beautiful that spirit provides others to help us on the way so that we don't feel like we're alone or there's no one we can go to, you know? Yeah. And and just to be humorous here, uh, my biggest goal is to put myself out of business immediately by showing everybody <laughs> how to me connect too. to God directly yeah. and not need me ever again. Me too. Um, so it's 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 the joke, right? So if we we want to teach people how to fish, so right? When that Not, happens, I'll retire yes. and open that Irish pub I keep talking about opening. Amen, sister. Amen. <laughs> I love that. I'll be there for the fish and chips. Exactly. I'm ready. I'm I'll ready. Sit on, I'll sit at the beach here with my Irish pub and um, yes, and, and I'll and play in the mm. band that plays every night, and then that's my retirement. Yeah, oh, I, she, I, Sheena, I absolutely adore you. I'm so happy <laughs> I'm here right now. <laughs> I wish I thought that day would come. Um, uh, when, when did you know, because you knew a long time before you came out with your gifts that you had gifts, right? I always tell people that this part of me, when people are shocked, like, oh, my God, this is who I always was. I just now wear my underwear on the outside. Yeah, um, yeah. It always fueled everything I did, even and especially as an artist. Um, were you kind of the same way that you were presenting as an artist, but your spiritual self was running the show from behind the curtain? Um, yeah, uh, yes. I'll share one thing, if it's okay, that, that'll Please? put it in perspective. Um, one of the most popular shapes from my guitar company called an Inferno. Mm. I channeled that. I didn't know it at the time when I did it, but now I know that sure. was, there is an important reason that needs to be in our cultural zeitgeist. And that was channeled. That was a God connection. I didn't know that I was doing that when I did it full, full transparency here. Right. So that's just the, the, the God connection part. You know that one of my proclivities is to remove a uh, negative and dark energy from people, places, and things like an exorcist. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, the first indication I had that I had something above and beyond that, um, than most people, uh, I had, a, a, a somebody that I knew who was a, a pastor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Christian pastor, very powerful, very removed dark energy, that kind of level. He was doing things I couldn't even imagine at the time. And, uh, he came to visit when I got my home and he visited and he walked through the door and he closed his eyes. And he opened his eyes and goes, and he had a funny look on his face. He goes, nice house. And that was it. We walked around. <laughs> Three or four years go by. I had to move. I had to move. And I relocated somewhere else and I invited him up. I go, please come up. Please come up and visit. So he comes up and he get, walks in the house, different house, closes his eyes. Now he's frustrated. He goes, I don't get this. 
I do not understand what's going on here. And I have, like no idea what he's talking about. I'm like, what's what's wrong? He's like, let me tell you, every time I walk into a house, there is always something for me to clear or or remove from a house. I've been to two of your homes and there's nothing, nothing here. It doesn't make any sense. And I just kind of, I just shrugged my shoulders. I was like, oh, cool. No, no oogie boogies in my house. But what I didn't get was, is like, I'm a walking exorcism. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dark energy can't exist in around me. It scatters. Yeah. And this is before I was doing anything, Sheena. This was just like a radiating thing, like a, a, a heat lamp. So I didn't have any idea that's what that meant. But looking back on it, I'm like, oh, my God, that was happening back then. And I didn't even know. So now it's directed. Now I'm doing it with intention. I'm, I'm calling out to God, asking for this help to do this work. But when it showed up, I, I didn't know. But I, it's so crystal clear with, you know, hindsight, right? So stuff like that literally was happening all my life. I can pick out the pinpoints where um, those things occurred, where I was bringing messages through. Yeah. So yeah. I hope that wasn't too long of a story. Thank no. you, everybody, for indulging me on that. No, but. and I, I love the fact that that's true about your house. Um, Crazy. <laughs> um, this house that I live in, okay? So when I was in elementary school, we lived outside of Baltimore, Maryland, in a house that was kind of like the Amityville house or the Conjuring house, like wow. really, really, really <laughs> negatively active. Wow. We moved here and I always say like out of the frying pan into the fire because where I live in Huntington Beach, I live right by a wildlife preserve that backs up to PCH, Pacific Coast Highway, for those of you not in LA, yep. and uh, Southern California. And um, where I live was actually part of the marshland, but they were allowed to develop this part. So my house is literally below sea level. Wow. Cut to my Scorpio mother was always sure the tsunami was going to come and take her out. Mm. Um, when my entire life since we moved here and probably long before we moved here when i was 13 there was a fight between the developers wanting to develop this marshland and the conservationists wanting to keep it because there is a species of nearly extinct heron that live in the wildlife preserve and funniness you can see them walking up and down my street these heron like they own the place and they mm -hmm. just wander around. They walk up and down the street like, this is my neighborhood. What are the houses doing there? So anyway, um, my mom got a lamp with a heron on it that's in my family room to honor the heron because this is really their home. Yeah. Um, somebody was fishing about 20 years ago and found, pulled up a 10,000-year-old Native American burial bowl. So we now know this is a Native American burial ground. But you didn't have to know that because this house was active from the minute we got here. Um, yeah. Not as bad as the Maryland house, but active. So I, one of the reasons I didn't want to move back here was that I didn't want to live in an active house because I find it distracting. But when I lived here before, I wasn't doing my work. My mother was barely out of the closet herself as a practitioner. Um, so I covered this place in salt lamps and selenite wands and brooms and black tourmaline and the cat and I live in complete and utter harmony. And that's the thing you, and I tell my clients this all the time, you can make peace with and, and negate activity in your home if you want to, but you have to make a, a conscious pact with spirit that you're going to bring tranquility into a space and then you have to do all those lovely things that we own, like sage and salt lamps and selenite wands, and really protect it because you really honestly don't want the activity. And I think a lot of people who, I always say the Maryland house, you know, my father was a very negative person. My mother was an out, not an in the closet psychic and I was in puberty. So it's like the perfect storm for spirit activity. But uh, a, a lot of people who say they don't want to live in haunted places, they have a conflicted relationship with what's in there. They want mm. it. They don't want it. They want it. They don't know. They don't trust themselves enough to not have it there. 
And um, I have clients that live in places all over the Hollywood Hills that are so haunted. And I'm up there cleaning these places all the time. I'm doing cleanses on them, cleanses on the houses, clearings. The bottom line is, you can, I, I, and I always tell them, if I can live in this house activity free, you can live in your house without activity. Um, yep. Because at night, you can feel the natives, the energy swirling around this house. But it doesn't get to come inside, or if it does, it's briefly. Because I do see the cat sometimes, like, um, it, it, because it's not it's not allowed. I said no. So um, yeah. it it is okay to make a harmonious space anywhere, no matter what the history of it, right, Mark? No matter what's gone on before you got there. It's really um, interesting, and nothing's um, an accident in this lifetime that you brought this up, and even the content. So on uh, uh, at Mark Edward official on TikTok, I just did a TikTok about clearing and houses. And the one I used as an example was um, a multi-million dollar home development um, uh, overlooking the city. Just an it's an incredible view. And, you know, these were 10, 15 million dollar a piece homes. Wow. And the developers uh, put it on a, a native burial area. Sure. And uh, I get the call. I get the ringer that, you know, paint is peeling off of the walls seconds after it's laid down. Yep, Things are yep. moving. The uh, construction yep. people are running out of the building screaming. And so I got the call. I said, and I tapped in on it while they're on the phone. And I, they, I, I was told again, God says, here's what happened and what is happening. And the, 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 these elder spirits were furious that they were not being, of course, at least being acknowledged, recognized, and some kind of let's call it a negotiation. That let's call it that. I don't know what else to label this, but I, I said I can help you, and uh, just we'll put this together. And I basically energetically went in there. Um, you know, it was like I don't call it astral travel, but I went in there and negotiated. Uh, and and tried, yeah, I just, what, that's it. I negotiated and I was able to find a way that they would be acceptable with a um, a joint, uh, I'll call it a joint ownership. I don't know how else to explain it, but I was able to, to bring some, um, to honor them. I was able, and luckily I had a little bit of background in uh, just part of my, um, small part of my family is uh, from Canada and in Ojibwe. Oh, so I, I did not so, know that. Interesting. Yeah. And so I, as far as um, ceremonies and, and studies go, I, I probably know more about, uh, you know, First Nation and uh, uh, indigenous ceremonies than probably most people you run into unless they're actually living on a res or also doing those ceremonies. So sure. I was able to go in there and uh, with a little bit of extra um, wherewithal and, and mitigate that really, really, really bad situation. And uh, I really do think that the uh, contractor, after my discussions, could be a little wiser for the wear when they're um, petitioning uh, cities and states to open up land, which is exactly the type of thing you were talking about, where they're wanting to, you know, developers are a special breed, right? They, you have to be wired to do that. And, um, you know, it, sometimes they don't want to see things getting in the way. And with all due respect to my developer friends, you know, they'd probably agree with me on this. So sometimes things happen. You are not going to expect and uh, putting property, people, energy and other things where people it's either sacred space or buried. Stuff's going to happen. And then you end up looking for people in the phone book. You never thought you'd be looking for their phone number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yes. And, and and you have to think about that. I mean, that's something that. um I mean, I, I think maybe we're starting to talk about it more. So we're thinking about it more. Some people really want to live in a haunted house. I don't. I, I did it. It wasn't fun. And I don't want to do it again. And I, I have enough haunted in my life that goes on in here and out there in my life. I don't need it here. I need a safe sanctuary here where I can be away from every celestial Tom, Dick and Harry. Right. Um, but um, let's talk about haunted really quick, because that's a, 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 an important word. Sure. So um, let's 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 chop that up a little bit. Sure. So many times people uh, make an appointment with me because they're saying there's stuff going on in their house. So the first thing I'm tapping in on using 
those, you know, exorcist and negative energy removal and that God channel is, okay, so what's really going on here? So many times these are family members that are coming down to visit and just letting them know, hey, I'm here, I, I'm looking out for you, but they're not getting the message. All they're getting is there's something moving stuff around in my house. This is going on and this is going on. So I can go in there and go, oh, it's, it's Aunt Clara, Aunt Clara, and here's the message she wants to bring. And, and she's there to look out for you. This is not bad. It's not negative. You're just in that fear and not knowing what it is. So you assign it the worst possible thing it could be, which is haunted by something dark, evil, and destructive. That's not always the case. So right. haunting can be a lot of different things. It could be something, a ghost, right? Something negative. But just because you don't understand it at the moment, you could have a lot of family members that visit you and are there to, to protect you and, and bring that beautiful energy. But you just, it's the first time you've ever experienced them like that. And so the fear factor kicks in. Now, I'm not plugging a TV show by saying that, but <laughs> you, you have to just help them say, hey, look, this is what's going on now. Are yeah. you okay with them being here in your home? A lot of the times they're like, oh, okay, well, now that I know it, it's that's not so bad. Like, I love Aunt Clara. So there you go. It's a done deal in the appointment. You, you solve the problem. Sometimes people are like, yeah, that's too much right now for me. So is there any way we can deflect that? Then you have to go to a second method, ha talking to these loved ones who are not there to do anything negative, by the way. So that you can't exercise a positive force. You can right. kick out a negative one, right? Or exercise a, a demon or an entity or a negative attachment. But if something's good and benevolent, what, you don't want to kick that out. But some people want it out anyway. So then you have to go to the negotiation, which just circling back, when I went up and was dealing with the issue with the natives and the million dollar homes being on their land, I wasn't going up there to do an exorcism. That was a negotiation. They were not bad people doing anything bad. So it's, there's a lot of different levels and you have to be really nuanced when you're tapping in to know what exactly are we dealing with. So when I hear haunted, I'm thinking, you know, okay, that could be 10 to 20 different things. So what exactly kind of haunting are we talking about? Is it a misunderstanding? Is it truly a haunting where there's a spirit that decided not to go through the light, into the light, and it's down in that middle plane just with this anchor, you know, of an, an intensive event or an emotion keeping it locked here or, or, or any other of number of things. So again, in doing this work, I've had these experiences and all these, this information and intel. And of course, I love to share it with people. So I have to ratchet down on how much I share it once or people get overwhelmed or overloaded. But it's really helpful when I'm helping people because I have this encyclopedia of experience, like going out boots on the ground and interacting and helping uh, mitigate, mediate, and sometimes just kicking things out and off, which is an exorcism. So uh, there's a lot going on when I hear the word haunted. My, my mind jumps to a bunch of different possibilities. And thank you for oh, letting absolutely. me share that, by the way. <laughs> I kind of use it as a general term. As a matter of fact, I'm working on a book right now that's called Are You Haunted? Because I believe that sometimes after we've had an experience, right? We've had a paranormal mm -hmm. experience we become different. We become sensitive to it because it has happened to us um, in the same way that you can become sensitive to anything that's happened to you, right? Um, yeah. More than likely with folks, if it happens once, it'll happen again. And, um, and I think once you've experienced spirits, even if you didn't have a sensitivity towards it, after that experience, not only are you more susceptible to feeling it, but they're more susceptible to finding you. And I call that term being haunted. Um, okay. It's what my Irish ancestors used to call being touched, right? Right. Yet having a shine. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's some um, of the, I've heard those terms. Yeah. And it's great. The, the term, uh, not completely, but I call it an activation. And so to, yes. to il illustrate that, Yes. So let have you ever, a, 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 an example, taken somebody who's, an, I'll call them not switched on. They don't really have a spiritual connection going on that they're aware of. I can take them to some place that's quote unquote haunted. Everybody has an experience. They get nothing, right. nothing. And right. you you know people like that, right? Sometimes I envy those people, Mark. Yes. I, have, <laughs> I walked right into that one. <laughs> no, I, I do. Sometimes. No, I, no, I hear you. And I, I, I get it. Yes. 
So with those people, right, that they get nothing. Yeah. You yeah. can take your friend who's who's activated on their walk, has these abilities. They're yeah. picking up like a, a, a pinball machine. They're bouncing off the walls. They're seeing everything. So the point is, if somebody goes to someplace haunted and they get nothing, they're not activated. If somebody is seeing something at a haunted place, then they're activated. And you can't be one without the other. See what I'm saying? Yes. Like you can't, you can't, either you're activated or you're not. And if you're not activated, you can go to the most haunted place in the world and you won't get anything. Now, yes. if going to a haunted place activates you, that sure, that can happen. And then you're right. You're going to have to sit them down and explain, this is why your life is now upside down. Let's start at the beginning and end at the end. And let's not yes. leave out anything in the middle because they're going to need that. Yes. And as a small example, and then I'll, I'll pipe down here, but um, I've had some parents bringing young kids who've been activated and have beings sitting on the front of their bed, like a, a ghost of a grown adult man sitting on the front of like some 12 year old yeah. kid's bed. And they're, you know, they're thinking, you know, the meds and my, is my kid going crazy? And, you know, I'll just say by the grace of God, I was able to, to get referred somehow tap in and go, okay, here's what's going on. Explain they've been activated. Here's what it's looked like. Here's how you, for, for your unique child, here's how you can get that under control. So she's not freaking out or he's not freaking out and you're not freaking out. And I will tell you again, by the grace of God, I have had a hundred percent success helping parents with kids that have been switched on. Not one fail. And, and that I can't take any credit for that. That's straight up God uh, stepping in to do that. But yes, what you said about that book and, and please get that book out as soon as possible, sis. Oh my God, the world yeah. needs you. It needs yeah, you. That's, that's super important intel so people can understand what is happening to me. Yeah, I just started teaching a workshop called Are You Haunted? And I taught it at a festival last year. And I'm going to teach it a bunch of times this year because oh, I amen. think people need to know who they are and why it's happening and why, um, you know, why they suddenly see spirits everywhere. Or spirits come and contact them and some people don't like it and they want to shake it off. But you it, you can't you, know, you can't unsee something once it's no. a part of who you are. You resonate differently and you consciously become aware of this activity. And then you just have to find a way to realize that's who you are and make peace with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, and if there's, if any of the stuff, and we're talking about so many awesome topics, I love your show. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank if you. anybody has a, I have these proclivities, these unique little niche things that I'm really good at. If anybody on your show needs assistance with that, the easiest way is at Mark Edward official. It's Mark with a C on TikTok. That's a real easy way to get a hold of me. And I've got some videos up that explain some things. Uh, that'll help help you understand and get on that walk you need to get on. But doing your book, like you're saying, is going to be huge and your classes huge because um, we're pushing back, as I call it this way, we're pushing back on the matrix. People yes. like yourself, myself and others that in our community are, are, are forcing people to understand that what we have been shown and sold in kind of what we're living with is a construct. And we're and and this brings me back to what you said about people trying to insert themselves between you and God, be, yes. or as you put it, you and Spirit. They're trying to get in between you and your direct connection. That needs to stop. People need to be able to go direct to God and talk with God and ask questions they have because you want to know who's always going to have their back and give them that that solid information where they can trust it. It's God. Yeah. If you're human, no offense to us, because we're that too. Humans <laughs> will get it wrong, right? Humans will get it wrong. They'll never be a perfect human being. Give up on that concept. And right. so there's only one place we can go where we can really trust that. So yeah. that's the big message. I trying to get everybody with their connection, like as a fun thing with how to talk to God and get answers back, which is the one I'm working on um, releasing in February. If they were teaching this method, in grade school, okay? Imagine this, close your eyes, imagine this world that they teach you how to connect and talk to God and get answers back. So it's a conversation, not praying and then wishing and hoping. I mean, a conversation. Your parents have been doing that since you were born. You've been watching them do that. You've never had, listen to this part. You have never had a relative die. Relatives just change into their God force energy body and you still talk to them. 
As a matter of fact, some people even think it's a bonus because they're not bound by that body anymore. They can talk to them any time they want. What would that do to this planet when it comes to grief? Yes. And, 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 and have you seen people that's lives that their, their child is, you know, run down at a young age, like, you know, in a crosswalk, something horrific. Right. And, and their, their lives never repair that they're in despair. They, they lose their job. I mean, all these, these it's misery and it's, it's pain and horror that like cut that by 50% because they just shifted into their energy body. You've been talking to your relatives since you were a kid. You watch your parents do it. It's not a very difficult skill. And you're a map by the time you hit fourth grade, you, that's a mastery skill. You may have had that mastered in your home. Yeah. Just with your parents, what would our planet look like if talking to God was just something that everybody did that, that when you went on a talk show, okay, and you could say, I talk to God and get answers back, that you got no followers or ratings because who cares? We all do that. <laughs> See, that's where we need, all jokes aside, that's yeah. where we need to be. We need to be yes. where that there's no need for that because everybody does it. And that way, see, the people that are trying to keep us in this matrix, right? This yeah. rat maze, this 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 construct that that feeds on misery. Okay, it does. And and what better way to generate misery and despair, depression, by propagating this belief that when you when when people die, they're gone. Don't talk to them. They're out. It's loss. You can't, just stop. And if you try to connect with them, bad stuff's going to happen to you. Now, I don't, you can apply that to anything, right? Any, any religious organization, it doesn't matter. What does that do other than generate more grief, more sorrow, and more loss? Who benefits from generating that kind of a paradigm? Yes. Only beings and entities that feed on misery. Yes. And sadly, and I'm not, look, I'm not a, a conspiracy person, so let me just put that out there. But I really believe like the puppet masters in this world, our globe, those type of people are the ones running everything sure. that feed on that. That's just what I'm seeing. So I'm pushing back against that to try to get people connecting directly to God to get around the matrix stuff. Absolutely. And well, thank you. I'm off my off my soapbox. Thank you very much. You have to be firmly embedded in the light to keep darkness away. And I say that to people and I say, look, I'm not saying that to scare you. I don't want you to feel unnerved, but I also don't want you to live in like la 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 land where you think the whole universe is light and there isn't any darkness because yep. there is. And sometimes mm -hmm. the things that happen to us, uh, th that's not God. That's, you know, that's, that's the darkness. And you have mm -hmm. the further you, the more you stay connected to light, the less the darkness is going to be um, able to have any part of your life. But yeah, you have I've... to know when you get on your spiritual path in the beginning, sometimes a lot of stuff happens. I always say when I teach, the more you step into the light, the more the darkness pays attention. And so mm -hmm. we all have that time when we're getting on our path where stuff is going down. And uh, it's okay. It's not anything to be fearful of, but it's also not something to turn a blind eye to in the same way that I always say, look, I grew up in a surf town. Um, you don't pretend sharks aren't in the water. You protect yourself and do what you can to not attract them. And when they come, you try to repel them, but you cannot pretend they're not here because they belong in the ocean as much as we do. And, you know, darkness and light both belong in the universe. And, you know, you, you can't control both. Yeah. And uh, it's all being a unique person on your walk. My belief is God's going to, based on, let's call it a soul contract, that you're, uh, it, there's going to be some destiny based things that you're going to encounter in your lifetime. Sure. That, that, that you will be guided. Like when certain things or you do certain things, you're going to feel like you're in a flow. It's almost going to feel unreal that things line up the way that they do. And when you're out of that flow, it's going to be like hitting every roadblock in the world. Right. So there's two things you ask yourself. Are these roadblocks there so I can figure out how to get around roadblocks? Because I'm going to be a teacher and teachers have to help people figure problems out. If everything right. rolls the right way for you, you're not going to be a very good teacher because you won't know how to help somebody when they get jammed. Yeah. So, so there's, you have to figure out, are you out of the flow? Cause you're not really in alignment with your soul, 
that sole contract, your sole purpose? Or is this purpose driven to prepare you to teach others how to get past their blocks and their, you know, speed bumps or however you want to put that. So it's, again, that's something you could go to God and ask the question, am I on my path? And, and if you get a no, then say, God, will you please show me a good direction I could take right now? Yeah. And I guarantee you, you will get some advisement. It doesn't have to be through a seeing things in your mind on your screen. You may see a billboard while you're driving and the three words pop out of that billboard like they're lit up of the 25 words there that are the answer to that question. In my book, a removing, um, Dismantling the Darkness, the Exorcist Guidebook, How to Remove Dark Energy, I call it getting pinged. A guide has a million ways to get you a message. And as long as you realize that's the case, you will start seeing, there's a couple terms. The other one is called permanent peripheral vision. Mm. I teach people how to develop that so you can see where God's going to be sending your messages to you. Because everybody's unique. Everybody is unique. Nobody is going to get messages the same way. So again, on the books that I do, I have to do them in the, the standpoint of stepping stones that will work for everybody, but it's not so myopic that it's that it's going to leave anyone out in the cold. It, when you think of it that way, it's really tricky to write a book because you don't want anybody feeling like that book let them down. Yes. Yes. So, um, right. just sorry, sidebar there, but yeah, thank you for no, letting me share good that. Good point. Right, or that it confused them, and I think that goes for a workshop or a class or um, a broadcast, whatever it is. You never want to feel like somebody's become more confused after you spoke than they were before you spoke. Um, that would be the, nice. But at the same time, um, so, I, so I think you have to gear your stuff when you speak uh, or write for all different levels of enlightenment. So different people at different places can all take something away from it. But at the same time, you have to tell your truth and you have to speak um, or write the things that Spirit is telling you to put in this particular project. And um, you can't worry about what people are going to get from it. You just have to do it and people will get from it what they're supposed to. And I think that it's just another sign of, of understanding that to have complete control in your life, you have to know that you're completely out of control and be yeah. okay with that and surrender. It's a yeah, lot God. about surrendering. And I think if people think we don't do that, like, oh, we're done with all our surrender. I'm like, are you kidding me? I surrender every day to a hundred things. Good for you, sis. Cause that's it. I pe more people should take your lead on that. God's yeah. in, God's in charge. And um, you can go around thinking you're in control and that's, you, you're welcome to do that. But in reality um, that'll get pivoted. If uh, God's got a plan, that plan's going to happen and you have a choice, right? You can either get on board with it or go around feeling really out of alignment. Yes. Yes. Pretty much. Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah. You are wonderful, my friend. Will you come and do this with me again? I would be so honored. You know what I love about your show? What? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> what a coincidence because I love everything about you. So it works I, out beautifully. We are in, we are in perfect agreement on your we show, are. Rock. So thank you so much. And, and um, I would love to, and uh, I know uh, you have so many people out there that are so amazing that listen to your show because I can feel it over here in Nevada. Thank so um, yeah, hello to everybody there that uh, chimed in and uh, listened. And oh my gosh, Sheena, thank you so much. If I if I can see you at one of these music events too, I know you're a fantastic musician. Thank uh, you. That would be super fun. And uh, definitely um, the the guitar. Uh, outfitting with the guitars for your new project. Just yes. reach out and we'll get that handled. I'm starting to, we're starting to write for the new project. It's called Sheena Metals Vibe. Woo! So <laughs> I love gonna it. Be, it's going to be my first foyer into a, like a spiritual rock band. I'm like super excited. The world needs more of that, sis. Absolutely right? do it. Oh my right? goodness. Right? I love it. Um, so yeah, keep me in the loop and, and uh, yeah. I will bid everyone adieu and uh, I'll talk to everyone and you on the flip side. Where can people find you, sweetie, if they want to contact you? Um, really great place would be uh, at Mark Edward Official, and it's Mark with a C, E-D-W-A-R-D, -D, Official, and that's on TikTok. Uh, super easy to get me there, and uh, I'm pretty much going to be focusing uh, all of my energy content 
and the community uh, over to that TikTok platform. So uh, go ahead and reach me there if there's any questions about anything you heard on the show or if you need somebody uh, for assistance on any of those topics that are kind of my, uh, uh, I have a little extra gift uh, for doing. I'm always happy to help people. So I appreciate the opportunity to share that and uh, sending everybody waves of love and support for whatever they have going on. Thank you for being here, my friend. And if you want to contact me, everybody, chinametalspiritual.com. I'm at chinametalspiritual.com. Please check out my website and send me a text message. Let's do something. Let's book a session or an energetic cleanse or, or just get to know each other better. I'm at 818-437-0886. That's 818-437-0886. And of course, everywhere on social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and X, formerly Twitter, you can just find me at Sheena Metal. Uh, until I see you next time, my friends, seek peace, live in love, lead with kindness, embrace unity, always work to raise your vibration, and maybe most importantly know that you are love, and you are loved, and you're so loved by me. I'm Sheena Metal. This is The Experience, KGRA Digital Broadcasting Network. Thanks to my wonderful engineer and producer, Emery. You are the wind beneath my wings. Thanks for making this show so beautiful. And you know what? I'll see y'all next time right here uh, every Friday at three o'clock Pacific time. Thank you for being here.